children love to play with other children until they get racialized. Kids have no problems smiling and talking and hanging out with each other until we pass on those implicit bias. And I would suggest to you that it's not what we say or don't say to our children that is impactful, but it's what they see or what they don't see that is more impactful. I was uh, teaching a session once and a woman asked, how do I teach my kid about diversity? You know, is there a curriculum, a book I can use? I said, well, first of all, point one in your curriculum should be do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, the so-called golden rule. I said, point two in your curriculum for your family should be who is at your dinner table? Who's at your dinner table? Who do you find yourself around? I know that many of us come from, from contexts and environments where there weren't people that were so-called different from ourselves. That's not your fault. Where your parents grew up or raised you or the schools they sent you to, whether they could afford them or not, whether it's public or private, the part of town you grew up in, that is not your fault. But as adults, as people, as leaders who are going to be actionable in the world, it is now our responsibility. Most of us have cars, and do those cars have blind spots? Well, certainly they do. They're typically uh, like right in the front or by the windows in the front or in the back. And if you drive a Hummer, the whole thing is a blind spot. Or when you go to get a rental car, the blind spots in the rental car are different than the blind spots in your car. But those blind spots are not your fault. You weren't on the design team to manufacture that car. But when you sign on the dotted line for that rental car, you are saying, I am taking responsibility for the blind spots. So how do you find out about blind spots? The same way you find out about implicit bias. The same way that you find out about stereotypes. There are two ways. You either crash into something you make a mistake, you say the wrong thing, you possibly embarrass yourself in a negative way, or you can look for them. Yes, I'm suggesting that you have to look for things you don't know exist, and that's the only way that you'll find them. And so when we start looking for our implicit bias, when we start using tools and, and relationships to get feedback, that's when we can decrease those implicit bias and increase our ability to be actionable in the world in ways that operate above our reptilian brain, that actually engage the fullness of our mind. So now we are mindful. So how do I find out about my implicit bias or my blind spots? Well, first, you have to be honest with yourself. In order for any change to happen, you have to be the person that looks in the mirror and says, I want to see the world as it is and not just as I am. So let's go back to the store scenario that we presented a little bit earlier. And I'm going to put some faces up on the screen and I want you to, to think about how closely do these faces compare to the ones that you came up with? Which of these people walked out of the store without paying for what they took? Another tool that I'd like to give you is something that you can use as a self-assessment, the Harvard Implicit Association Test. This test simply does some word associations, some pictures associations. Use it kind of like a horoscope just to give you a sense of what things you might be biased towards or against. The Harvard Implicit Association Test. Be a critical thinker. I remember reading the autobiography of Malcolm X. There was one thing that really captured my attention that was demonstrated very well in the book as well as in the movie, which was this final scene of the film. And in this final scene, um, Malcolm X is delivering a message, and at this point he is uh, Malcolm Shabazz. There's a disturbance in the crowd, and a man yells, get your hand out my pocket. Now, the whole room is disrupted by this outburst because Malcolm was delivering a very profound and effective speech. And so this disturbance happens to the left. And so everyone turns to the left to see what this disturbance is. And while they're looking to the left, the assassin comes from the right 
and kills Malcolm. What does this have to do with implicit racial bias and stereotyping? To become an effective leader, we can't succumb to the noise of the crowd, but we have to be critical thinkers. And so the moral for me of that particular story is very simple. If I follow the noise of the crowd, I could be ignoring something very profound coming from the other direction. I could actually be operating in a blind spot. Can you imagine living your whole life with blind spots and causing havoc all around you on the highways and the byways and never knowing what is happening around you? And so it's important that we recognize that these implicit bias create blind spots for us that limit our ability to be effective and also can be causing detriment and harm to people around us without even our awareness of them. All right, so this is what I want you to do right now as a simple assessment that you can use to figure out where you might have implicit bias. Take out a piece of paper and across the top, I want you to put down categories of human beings. So maybe this is uh, African Americans, European Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Disabled Americans. So just fill those in. And along the side here, I want you to tell me, what did your parents and family teach you about each of those groups? Um, what did school teach you about each of those groups? What uh, in your workplace have you learned about each of those groups? And finally, what have you learned from personal experience about each of those groups? But I want you to do it in a very particular kind of way. What I'd like for you to do is if you learn something positive, I want you to simply put a plus. If you learn something negative, I want you to put a minus. And if you've never had a discussion with those groups or about those groups, I want you to put a zero. And so as you put your pluses, your minuses, and your zeros, you might find that there are places that you have pluses and minuses. Go ahead and put a plus and a minus there. But the size of your plus and the size of your minus will dictate how much you learned. So a little bit of negative means you'll have a small minus. And lots of positive means you'll have a big plus. Once you've engaged in this simple assessment, you can now see where, where are the areas that you can now start to take responsibility for. Again, what you grew up knowing or not knowing or where you grew up is not your fault, but is now your responsibility to eradicate your implicit bias.